Tonight, freedom rings. From the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado, freedom rings. 45 years ago today, my father delivered his I Have a Dream speech. Tonight, we witness in part what has become of his dream, the acceptance by Senator Barack Obama of the presidential Democratic nomination. Decided not by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character. This is one of our nation's greatest defining moments. 45 years later, I am proud to introduce another Martin Luther King, the firstborn son of our parents, Martin and Coretta King, born into the generation that would realize the dream and who leads the organization Realizing the Dream, Inc., through which he addresses pressing issues confronting our nation and world, such as health care, education, values, poverty, and war. He is a human rights activist, a man on the move. Please join me in welcoming the son of the dream and my dear brother, Martin Luther King III. While waiting to come to the podium, I could not help thinking how proud my father would be, proud of Barack Obama, proud of the party that nominated him, and proud of the America that will elect him. On this day, exactly 45 years ago, my father stood on the National Mall in the shadow of Abraham Lincoln and proclaimed, I have a dream that one day this nation will live out the true meaning of its creed. You know, we are all children of the dream, and he is here in all of our hearts and minds. But not only that, he is in the hopes and dreams, the competence and courage, the rightness and readiness of Barack Obama. But my father would be quick to remind us that realizing his dream is not Barack Obama's job alone. America needs more than a great president to realize my father's dream. What America needs is a great America. Let me paraphrase my father. For the ultimate measure of a nation is not where it stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where it stands in times of challenge and controversy. On some questions, cowardice asks, is a position safe? Expediency asks, is a position politic. Vanity asks, is a position popular? But that's something deep inside called conscience asks, is a position right? Sometimes, he said, we must stand up and take positions that are neither safe nor popular nor politic, but we must take those positions because our consciences tell us they're right. And if we are to be a great democracy, we must all take an active role in our democracy. We must do democracy. 
Uh, that goes far beyond simply casting your vote. We must all actively champion the causes that ensure the common good. For in five short years, when we reflect upon the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington, let us look back and celebrate our audacity to redress poverty. Commemorate the hope and faith that led us to take charge of our lives and communities, and venerate our dream of life, liberty, and happiness through our renewed commitment to prevent unjust wars from ever being waged. Then, let us look forward to the next 50 years as we stand together because our potential as a people is limitless. Work together because our ability to do good in the world is boundless and live together because our values of fairness, full justice, opportunity, and the majesty of the dream. On this 45th anniversary of the March on Washington, and in honor of the legacies of my father and Bobby Kennedy, let us give our nation a leader who has heard the, this clarion call and will help us achieve the change because we still need Barack Obama. Thank you so much and may God bless you always.